When you are doing chemistry, it is very common, especially with uh, biological samples uh, and, and other very sensitive reactions like that, um, it is very common that you need the pH of a solution to stay within a certain range. Now inside your body, we've, we talked about this earlier in the chapter, um, your body has a, a system that holds the pH of your blood in a very, very tight range. Now, if you're doing chemistry just in a beaker uh, on a countertop, you don't have the incredibly complex machine that is your body to control the pH of the solution. So we need something else. And what we have is what we call a buffer. And truthfully, what your body uses is actually a buffer as well. It's just, you know, it creates the buffer all on its own. And uh, we have to create the buffers uh, for our own chemical reactions. Uh, what a buffer does is it uses the common ion effect to hold the pH within a certain range to a certain extent. There's no perfect buffer out there. Uh, and buffers, uh, and by the way, it's not this kind of buffer, this kind of buffer here. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect buffer. Even when you add a small amount of acid or base to a buffer, uh, the pH does change slightly, but not nearly as much as it would without the buffer being present. So these are, like I said, mostly used uh, in uh, like biochemistry and in other situations where you really need the pH to stay consistent. But there are plenty of other situations where it's useful as well. Uh, it's just the situations where I've used the most of the time was in my biochemistry class where you had cells and the cells would die if they didn't have a certain pH. Um, so if the pH varied too much, if you had side reactions going on that increased or decreased the pH, um, you could kill your cells that you were working with. And so you needed to have them in a buffered solution. So let's talk about how these buffers work. So we're going to go back to our good friend here, our generic weak acid equation. We have our weak acid reacting with water to produce H plus and the conjugate base. So the acid dissociation constant uh, equation looks just like this. Again, we've seen this a few dozen times at this point. But if we take this and we do a little bit of algebra to it, and really just a very minimal amount, we can get to this equation. So this equation is the exact same equation as this. We've just moved stuff around. So we've, uh, we've multiplied both sides by HA, divided both sides by A minus. Uh, and uh, that's actually, that's all we did there. Uh, we just essentially took this section and uh, flipped it and moved it to the other side. That's all we did. What this equation gives us is an equation that relates the constant and the ratio of the weak acid and its conjugate base to the concentration of H plus. So we have a way of finding H plus using the acid dissociation constant and the ratio that we have here. So the, the concentration of H plus is really dependent on once you've picked the acid, since this is a constant, it doesn't change once you pick the acid. The pH of the solution is really dependent on just this ratio here, how much of the original acid is present and how much of the conjugate base is present. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a solution that has a good bit of the weak acid in it. And then we're going to add a significant amount of a salt of that weak acid, which is just a, the soluble salt, usually sodium whatever the, the conjugate base is. When we do that, we're going to have a significant concentration of both HA and A minus. So we'll have a, a bunch of both of these. When we have a solution like that, if we add a relatively small amount of either H plus or OH minus, what's going to happen is the H plus is going to react with the conjugate base here, and the conjugate base is going to be turned back into HA. That's what's happening here. 
So if you have some H+, if you add a little bit of this into the solution, it's not going to react with the water to produce more uh, H+, in solution. It's going to seek out the conjugate base and turn it back into a, uh, a weak acid molecule. And the same is true if you add in some base. So if you put base into solution, instead of reacting with the water, it's going to react with the strongest acid that's present. The strongest acid that's present is not the water, it's the weak acid that we have in there. Because whatever the weak acid is, it's going to be more acidic than water um, uh, by definition. Otherwise it wouldn't be a weak acid, it would be a base. Um, so if we put in base, it reacts with our weak acid. If we put in acid, it reacts with our weak base. And in both cases, we're not actually adding very much H plus or OH minus to the solution because we're mainly just increasing the amount of these two. And those don't have nearly as much effect on the pH. <clears throat> so any small changes that we make to this ratio of the weak acid and its conjugate base is going to have a very small effect on the concentration of H plus and so the pH isn't going to change very much. It's going to effectively remain constant, although it will change a little bit, just a little bit. So to kind of try and visually show what's happening here, our, if we start with a buffer made of hydrofluoric acid and fluoride ion, so this is our weak acid here, this is its conjugate base, if we have a significant amount of both of those things, and we add in some base, so it might initially make OH- in solution, but that OH- is going to seek out and find the strongest acid that it can, which is HF, and it's going to react with that to form F-, and so we would have a little bit extra F- and a little bit less HF. And because both of these are weak, they don't have a very strong effect on the pH. They'll have a little bit, but not much. And the opposite is true if we add acid. The acid would find the strongest base in solution to react with, which is fluoride. Fluoride is a stronger base than water, and so instead of just making uh, H plus in solution, it's going to react with that fluoride to make HF. And so we would have a little bit more HF and a little bit less F minus, and again, a slight change in those concentrations is going to have a slight change on the pH, but not anywhere near the effect that just adding the acid straight into water would have. So we are essentially using the buffer molecules as sacrificial molecules. So instead of the acid or base that we put in the solution reacting with the water, the acid or base react with our buffer molecules, which have a much uh, smaller effect on the pH uh, when it reaches equilibrium. So let's do a quick example here. This asks us to calculate the pH of a buffer solution that is 0.1 molar acetic acid and 0.1 molar sodium acetate. Okay. So we're going to do this just like we did the ice table in the last video. So we're going to have HA, which is the acetic acid. We're going to have H plus, and we're going to have A minus, which is the acetate ion. So we're starting with 0.1 of this, 0 of this, 0.1 of that. Because we have 0.1 of both the acid and the acetate, and we're assuming that all of this dissociates, which is a safe assumption. So just like before, we have minus x plus x plus x, and we're going to end up with 0.1 minus x x and 0.1 plus x. The Ka value for acetic acid, 
Oh, I want to say it's like 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, but I th think it is listed back here somewhere. I think. I might be remembering wrong. Yeah, I'm not remembering correctly. Okay, I'm going to need to look that up real quick. Let me find that here. Sorry, I didn't have that prepared beforehand. Okay. Really should just have it listed in the question. Okay, acetic acid. Uh, let's see, what did I say before? I think I actually got it right. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So that is the Ka value for acetic acid. So we are going to have x times 0.1 minus x over 0.1. Oh, actually, that should be 0.1 plus x. Sorry. So the plus goes on top there. Not that it's actually going to matter. Uh, minus x. And I say it's not going to matter because we are going to go ahead and make the x a small assumption. So that those plus and minus x's just disappear. So if we solve for x, let's see here. That is going to, well actually, I know what that's going to be. Because those two cancel out. Because we have 0.1 and 0.1, so those just cancel out. And so x is just 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And so, since that is the concentration of H+, plus, since that's what x is, then the pH is just going to be negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, which is 4.74. So that is the pH of our buffer. All right. We're going to call it there for this video. In the next video, we're going to continue our discussion of buffers and we're going to make our lives a lot easier when it comes to buffers and calculations for buffers. So I'll see you in that next video.